Well, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to uh, acknowledge, of course, the, uh, the presence of the honorable ministers who are here today. I'll start off with those who are from Ba. <laughs> um, so, Honorable uh, Praveen Bala, uh, who's here with us, uh, Honorable uh, Assistant Minister Vian Pillay, uh, Honorable Inia Seruratu, who's here, who obviously, those of you may not know, uh, he was recruited, I understand, at the same time as Reginald Jokan. And they are called what they call themselves the last of the royals. Uh, some of you know the Republic of Fiji military forces, but before the 1987 coups, it was known as the Royal Fiji military forces. So this is the last batch of people who were recruited as a, under the Royal Fiji military forces. So they call themselves the last of the royals. And they do act like that sometimes. <laughs> um, Honorable uh, Minister Sone Usamate, who is also uh, here with us, the Minister for Land. Uh, all the invited guests, uh, the various organizations, the real estate, the Bar Municipal Council, um, and of course, uh, Reginald Jokan, his wife, his uh, uh, son, and the managing director, and of course, all the, all the staff who are here present today with us, uh, Tui Tavua, the members of the land owning unit from Bar around here. We welcome you all uh, this evening. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what can one say at this type of event, in particular when uh, the managing director himself has actually uh, said a number of those issues that pertain to real estate agency. So I was sitting, I was thinking about what, what do I actually say, and I, I want to put in the Ba context. Uh, ba, of course, is a, a highly unusual town, uh, because if you look at Ba, a lot of the businesses that are fairly large businesses in Fiji, and indeed some of the many groundbreaking areas of businesses in Fiji, in fact, emanated from Ba. There are two theories as to why Ba has taken that position. One of them being that Ba is one of the very few towns in Fiji, apart from Suva Peninsula, that is completely freehold. And therefore, most of the people who were in Ba who started businesses were able to use their land as collateral to then go and you know, mortgage that, get money and establish their businesses or indeed grow their businesses as opposed to many of the other businesses in other towns and cities. The other, of course, theory being, and which could be a combination of the first, is that Ba was a very fertile area for growing sugarcane. And therefore, there were a lot of uh, you know, farming, cane farming in Fiji, as you know, for a number of decades, in particular after colonization from 1874, uh, probably right up till about 1950s or 60s, uh, sugar was the mainstay of the Fijian economy. That was the only way that we actually earned foreign exchange in Fiji. There was no tourism. There was post-World War II uh, export, for example, a little bit of uh, banana, uh, some coconut, etc. Copra, of course, was there also. But sugarcane was the largest mainstay of the Fijian economy. And that's why a number of the businesses that actually provided services to many of the sugarcane growing communities around Ba, in fact, grew their businesses as a result of the huge uh, sugarcane growing uh, district in, in Fiji, or in, in Ba here. So it's a combination of issues, but what is really, if we fast track it now to where we are, unfortunately, uh, Ba and many of the other towns in, uh, in the Western Division does not actually have real estate services. And one should question as to why it does not. And obviously, the reason why it does not is because there has been no professionalism in, in respect of real estate. A lot of the transactions have taken place uh, you know, through word of mouth or personal transactions. From an economic perspective, from an accountability perspective, it's always good to have real estate agencies. And when you have real estate agencies, it means there's no dealing under the table. Uh, back in 2007, there's a World Bank report in fact, 2006, at the end of 2006, there's a World Bank report that said one third of the Fijian economy was in the black. In other words, it was not accounted for. Transactions were taking place, cash transactions were taking place. So the real estate agency, the, the, the board itself, which licenses real estate agents, and we know that Jokon Realtors, in fact, has been one of the key uh, real estate agencies in Fiji. And in fact, uh, he has also provided me with a lot of intelligence in respect of who are the real estate agents who are doing things that are not necessarily legitimate. So real estate agency actually brings legitimacy uh, into the economy, into your towns and cities. And therefore, it's critically important 
that we have these types of businesses available. For those businesses who are here, if you are doing transactions in the real estate, if you are renting out businesses, if you're making sale transactions or selling properties, it's best to engage a professional service provider than to, for example, do things on your own. It brings better accountability. It ensures, for example, you have compliance with FRCS and many, all, and many of the other areas of the law. So I'd like to thank uh, the uh, uh, Jokan Realtors to actually taking a very brave step. Many people, in fact, shirked away from investing, in particular in the post-pandemic world. I mean, as you know, that uh, our revenues halved, uh, as mentioned by Firoz, in respect of the, uh, the pandemic, overnight. And it was a wonderful uh, occasion to see the first flights come uh, into Fiji on Wednesday. It was a team effort. It was a team effort led by decisive leadership by our Prime Minister, the Ministry of Health, the military, the police, the doctors, the nurses, everybody else that combined to provide a particular service to all Fijians, not just to keep them safe, but obviously to roll out the massive vaccination. And whenever we used to get uh, the vaccination reports, the ministers would tell you, uh, perhaps sometimes on a daily basis or a weekly basis, we would see the different areas in Fiji, you know, uh, Suva, Latoka, Ba, Nandi. And Ba always seems to have more vaccination, more vaccination than actual people themselves. So we used to have like 101%, 102%. Of course, that kind of, we, we thought obviously, you know, this is Ba thing is happening over here. But that, that kind of panned out later on where, you know, as somebody said to me when I got out of the car as I was putting on my mask, they said, look, there's no point putting on the mask because we're all vaccinated. <laughs> so, um, ladies and gentlemen, this team effort has actually led to the tourists coming to Fiji. We had five flights, as the Honorable Prime Minister said in Parliament yesterday on Thursday. All of the flights were full, two from Melbourne, two from uh, Sydney, one from L.A. There'll be daily flights from L.A. Uh, continuously now. There'll be five flights a week from San Francisco. We've got sometimes, most of the days, double dailies from Sydney. And of course, New Zealand is not open yet, and we hope they'll open soon too. What this means is that literally tens of thousands of Fijians are going back to their jobs. It will mean that a lot of them will actually get into jobs that require them to get accommodation. It will mean a lot more of them will have money to spend. It means that the economic robustness now increases. And when that happens, more business activities take place. There's more transactions that take place. People buy homes. Just for information, the government had announced in the budget, in the, tw in the uh, last budget, the current budget, which is the 21-22 budget, that we give $30,000 as grant to those people who are building their first home and who earn less than $50,000. $15,000 grant to those people who earn less than $50,000 and who are, who are buying their first home. So we, we, we then have, of course, another category of people who earn between $50,000 and $100,000 who are also given grants to buy or build homes. Those monies, in fact, have completely been used up. We've already expended $3 million. We have another 110 people queued up, loans approved, ready for the, those grants. So this means there'll be a lot more activity. As Reginald was highlighting, the construction industry and the rejuvenation of the construction industry is always a good hallmark to measure that there's a lot more robustness in the economy. Because when you build a home, you need somebody to dig the foundation, lay the foundation, somebody to lay the bricks, buy the steel, do the painting, do the plumbing, do the roofs, do the joinery. A whole array of people are engaged which means that money is spread into the economy. So businesses that actually did invest during the pandemic, businesses that are investing now, are actually streets ahead of those businesses who will wait until the economy gets a lot better. Because those who invest now, in fact, are pre-positioning themselves. Those who invest now, whatever it's in real estate, whether it's in any other sector, in fact, will be the first beneficiaries of the economy taking off. And this is why we provided a lot of incentives in the budget. And we indeed hope to do more. The other point that I like to make, because real estate, you know, I, and I want to use this occasion, real estate is actually most heavily dependent on people having confidence in the economy, people feeling that there is stability. 
So those of you who are in the business sector, those of you who want to invest, whether you're somebody who wants to buy a home next year because you've grown, you're now married or you have children, all of that depends on the stability of the economy. And stability of the economy comes from not just decisive leadership, but stability in policies, consistency in policies. And as we've continuously said, in the past nine years, we've grown, of course, before the pandemic, but you know for a fact that the policies put in place by the Fiji First Government, this government, has been consistent. And that consistency gives you stability. And that consistency will give confidence. It will give stability to the market. Prices won't become erratically, you know, change. They won't erratically change. So please remember that. A market will always respond better. Your real estate will increase in value, whether it's Itauke land, whether it's freehold land, whether it's state land, it will always react and appreciate if there is stability and if there's consistency in policies. So ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to thank once again uh, uh, Reginald and his company for investing in Ba. They're obviously uh, uh, setting up an office in Latoka too. And this is the type of sort of you know, new leadership uh, that we are seeing in some of the business areas. I'd like to congratulate him for that. I'd like to, of course, thank his young team. Um, you know, any organization is as good as the people that represent that organization. And, you know, I can see that there's obviously a very bright future ahead. We need to invest in our people. We need to give them the, the, the skill sets, the access to information, access to knowledge, access to training to ensure that they deliver, that they deliver better service. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you very much for your presence, and I'm sure you will all uh, congratulate uh, Jokan Realtors. Uh, please put your hands together for them, for this amazing investment that they've made. And I'd like to also take this opportunity to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous and a Happy New Year. Vinaka, thank you.